Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight You know, off. the last time we did this, it was uh, in my Ooh. kitchen. <clears throat> so I got everything all dialed oh, out, as it were. Well, you remember, it, this was a month ago. I guess we're just doing monthly episodes now. But it was a month ago, <laughs> and I was I had to output a bunch of shit on my uh, Mac. Well, you, you're still renting down your, your downstairs, yeah? Oh yeah, well my downstairs is always for rent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. do you mean the the first floor? <laughs> <laughs> always a vacancy, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, never a vacancy, but always open. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, not exactly a... easy. There's, there's trap doors and little spy holes you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and but here we are, in spite of yeah. all the odds. Um, looks like I'm coming in a little hot. You guys all sound pretty good. I, I turned down a little bit because I think I'm a little odd. It's, it's reading well. Well, um, how do you uh, how do you want to approach this, Lyle? I think I think we uh, we need to get we well, need to get where you're at with the news. Um, I want to say like three weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, my dad was kind of pretty sick. You know, he does dialysis. He's been doing about dialysis for about twelve years. Yeah. And so you always have to be careful about um, when you gain weight and when it's water weight, you got to be careful because it gets into your lungs and you could get pneumonia. And apparently they thought that he had pneumonia uh, like three weeks ago or so. It might have been four weeks ago. He was addressed with it. So, you know, he, he went to the hospital. He stayed a couple of days. They uh, basically just gave him dialysis enough to get those fluids off his lungs and... Um, he, they sent him home, and I, you know, you know, none but knowing, thinking that everything was fine. And I, I went to see him, and I, I, I just looked at him. I said, Jesus Christ, Dad, you look like hell. I mean, you probably should go back to the doctor, you know, because he was kind of gurgling and coughing up a lot of stuff. Yeah. And he looked like he lost about 10 pounds, you know, and it, he's, you know, in his little recliner, he looked tiny in it, you know, it was all just in a blanket and whatnot. And so they, they admitted him back again. Because he was having a really hard time to breathe. So they admitted him back. And I think the first night they ran like uh, scans and stuff. And they found basically a cluster of tumor of cancer in his upper um, lung. Yeah. And then the next day, uh, the following day, they found a second cancer, which was in his other lung. up top. So basically they didn't know if they were benign or not. So they did a test and I guess they took a... Some down his throat and was able to get into his lungs and, and take a biopsy on both sides. And it came back that it was positive for cancer. And uh, he was stage four. Uh, no and behold. Um, and that, that was found out uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It was the third week, so three weeks ago. Uh, I've been taking care of him for the last two weeks, um, taking him to dialysis on my off days of dialysis. So I, it sounds unheard of, but like I wake up at 4.30 to go to dialysis yeah because i i for one i need to have a coffee to wake up but i also have to have a shower so i what i do is i'll make the coffee take the shower and by the time i'm out of the shower the coffee's ready and i'll sip coffee and i'll you know see what's on the news whatever on the internet you know whatever and then start my day uh, i have to be there at like six you know to be in the chair to get stuck and so did he um so i, I would wake up at 4 30 you know if it wasn't me you know taking myself to dialysis i was taking him uh, you know, because he couldn't really drive. He was really out of a... And, and uh, you, if you've never seen it, you guys, uh, cancer takes fucking people like you've never seen. In two weeks, he literally lost like 20-something pounds and just shriveled up to nothing. And he, his, uh, you know, he couldn't barely walk anymore. His blood oxygen was really bad. What they also had to do is put a tube into his side that went into his lung uh, that that we could drain him uh, once, a, once a day. We did it in the evening time, and uh, that, that was kind of a, a mess as it was uh, to see, you know, to see that. I, anybody that was a, a smoker, to see that would definitely quit. So we were all really hoping um, that the uh, he would be able to take his dialysis and... Um, we, we were prepping to uh, go forward with the chemotherapy to try to at least shrink down the, the cancer in his lungs that, that wasn't, you know, 
filling up his lungs with fluid. Yeah. And uh, so dialysis is a real touchy thing. And I think, you know, we all kind of talked about it, I think, prior. But, like, you know, when you're in it, your blood pressure drops real hard. And uh, if you're sick, especially how my dad was, uh, it drops too far. And you can't, you can't go on. Um, they'll they'll pull you off the machine because they have a really high chance of killing you. Yeah, it will kill you. Yeah. Uh, and so um, they basically called. I had a phone call an hour before his last uh, dialysis treatment that was here in town in East Wenatchee to come pick him up and take him to the emergency room because he was his heart rate or his uh, you know blood pressure was really low and he was not starting to go incoherent. So. We took him, uh, I took him to the hospital. I picked up my mom we, and we drove over. Um, and uh, he was fully admitted from then. Um, after a few days, they, were, they gave him one more chance at dialysis in the hospital and uh, it, it didn't take. So yeah. um, the doctor, which is my doctor, um, basically cut him off dialysis. That's, that's a death sentence. You know, yeah. if you need dialysis and your kidneys aren't working, if you don't get your dialysis, you know, your, uh, all your major organs shut down, you know, um, and that's what was happening with him. Uh, he was basically on, um, morphine for a few days, um, you know, of keeping, you know, comfortable and stuff. And, uh, uh he, he passed like uh Friday at, um, 1130 I was luckily enough to see him that day um, a lot of people came and saw him which was really nice uh, he was a frequent goer of the country inn uh, which is an eatery here that yeah. uh, a lot of the waitresses came and seen him off uh, same with the man the owner no oh, that's uh, amazing yeah there's a lot of people that showed up and you know gave him a lot of love uh, but like I said, like with the morphine, he, he was in and out of uh, La La Land, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, that morphine's a motherfucker. I've had it before. I, I kind of know. it's It really knocks you out for a loop. Yeah. And so I, towards the end, I don't even know if he knew where he was. He kept on talking about wanting to go home. And it's like, you know, we, we, we talked to him like, you know, everything's going to be fine, you know, just day by day. And the doctors, you know, they kept on basically saying well you're you know you're you're on this planet shortly so you need to make sure you know you do this and that and this and you know so and he was freaking out because he's like i'm not dying kind of thing um but yeah he he, he passed uh, a few days ago and uh you know it, it's weird and i you know i hate to say it, it makes me sound cold you know i'm still emotional about it of course but like uh, my dad had different faces, you know, most fathers do, you know, most people do. Yeah. They go through changes and stuff like that. And like my dad, the, my dad, the one I remember, you know, and the one I want to remember is the one pre, uh, before he had his aneurysm, you know, which was, uh, put him in the whole dialysis in the first place. He had a brain aneurysm. He came out of the coma and his, his kidneys didn't work. But in that same sense, um, it was like he had a demon on his shoulder when he was, you know, younger until he got to that point. Uh, when he came out of the surgery and when he, you know, fully recovered, he was a lot more kinder, you know, more gentler person hmm. for sure. hundred, hundred percent. Um, it wasn't to a fault, you know, I mean, but it was, you could definitely tell there was a difference and you know, the last three weeks it was really hard because it's, you know, being on the drugs and stuff like that. It's really, you know, it's hard to see. Uh, he was he was pretty much in a, uh, you know, I guess a morphine. Uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it just it's a phase. A phase, yeah. Yeah, haze. It's a haze I would say of, haze. Uh, yeah. You know. He was he was basically just staring at the ceiling. You know, he's holding my hand, but he was staring mm -hmm. at the ceiling, and his eyes were gray. You know, Jesus. but he was he wasn't looking at anything. Yeah. You know, but he was kind of trying to talk and trying to you know you know i don't know conversate but you know when you're high th that high on morphine it, it's one of those things you know i you know, i don't take it for anything it's it is what it is yeah uh but yeah he passed like three hours later you know when i left damn yeah i'm so 
obviously, Lyle, we we don't know what to say. We don't know what to say. <laughs> we don't like we. Yeah. No, we, I, I, we, I get we, it. We, and I don't. I don't want your sympathy. No, it's just, you know, I know, but it's, it, it's like, cool. but, and there's a lot to it. I you know I I don't know all the ins and outs. Even though you're one of my oldest bestest buddies, going all the way back to the day. I don't really know your family that well. You know, you know mine. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I don't know your family that well. And you've shared some stories both in person and even on the show. And I know that there are some things back in the past, you know, just, uh, I, I don't know. It, it was a complicated relationship you had with your old man. Was that, is that fair to yeah. say? Oh, for sure. He, he was kind I'm, of a reckless. You know, he he fought in Vietnam and stuff. Yeah, and he did two tours and he came back. And when he came back, he he was he, he just kind of came back to Seattle. Uh, my my grandparents lived in Palisades, and I think afterwards, after the war, he came. They they moved close to be closer to him, and so they bought uh, a house uh, here in East Wenatchee. Um, my dad, uh, as you know, coming out of the war, he was kind of an alcoholic. He was kind of a drunk and he, uh, would always, you know, try to get this, this good looking bartender girl, you know, <laughs> to go out with him. And it was my mom <laughs> and they ended up hooking up and, uh, you know, she had two, two kids prior. Um, and what happened was, is they ended up moving here. I had to be closer to uh, his parents and um, the bar to like I, at the time it was, it's a lot of money, uh, but it was a thousand dollars to get down on a down payment on the house just next door mm -hmm. uh, to them. And they ended up uh, getting a, a loan from uh, his parents. Uh, they bought the house that I grew up in, um, you know, not too long after that, you know, they had me and my little sister. Uh, so a family of four, you know, and, the only and, house uh, I've ever known with the address Six six six. six, six, six. <laughs> I, mean, I remember that. Yeah, true story. <laughs> yeah, I used to get shit for it. Even when I was in uh, like elementary school, they'd take the bus. The bus would go all the way up Second Street and drop us off like right at the. <laughs> Your landlord's then... the devil. <laughs> right, and it was a red house. It was creepy. <laughs> and, well, what was funny, what scared the little kids was, or the the kids my age, I guess, yeah. um, was in the fall because it was like they had those big old gnarly trees that were all kind of evil looking. You know, in a red house. And, oh no, it's six six six. Well, look. By the time I met you, I was a huge Iron Maiden fan. Yeah. And I grew up in the was... church, so I knew all about six six six. I thought it, right. your address was the coolest thing ever. Please, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't gonna make fun of you for that. Well, but yeah, it's it's sad. He's he, you know, he was loved by a lot of people. I don't. Uh, obviously, you know that my memory is complete shit these days. Sure. post-traumatic brain injury um and post a lot of drinks but i don't know that you have ever shared with me and i definitely don't think you've ever shared on the podcast that your dad's demeanor changed that oh like for yeah the, for no. what you would consider to be the positive i don't think i ever really even talked about it i think i just talked about it recently today to somebody my ex-brother-in-law yeah uh I was thinking about it because it's it, it was a drastic change, you know. And you know what's funny is like a lot of people, you know. And I'm I'm not saying he was possessed by a demon, but like if you if you watch some of those ghost hunter stuff, you know, like the yeah. ghost adventures and stuff, some of those people you could tell that they're they get possessed by some weird kind of fucking well, demon. We use the de the word demon in an yeah. interesting way, and it, it. I think most people know what you're saying, what whatever you believe, and whatever that is, sure. I, m most people will know what you're saying. Well, even if you think of alcoholism as a, you know, like a demon on your shoulder kind of yeah. deal, you know, it's a, it's a good uh, analogy for a reason, but well, I'm telling you, he, he, he was kind of ornery, you know, he was not yeah. uh, somebody to really fuck with. I remember one time, um, you know, we were always go down to the arcade and, uh, and it, well, he's very protective too. And this is kind of reaches there too. Um, that, uh, video gate ar arcade that was down by like McDonald's down at the end of the the uh, electric fun company trip. was what it was called at one point yeah 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 uh you always used to go down there and hang out and uh, play video you know arcade games and uh play pool and whatever and one of the older kids um had a pool stick missing and one of the guys oh that that guy uh lyle i think he's he took it took off 
And so fucking, I was at home. I, I wasn't even down there. Nothing about it. And a truckload of, uh, you know, yous older than me come <laughs> driving up and they pull in the parking lot and come out the front. And, uh, you know, the, the guy approaches me and he, you know, cause I went out and talked to him and he goes, you know, I, there's somebody down there. So you stole my pool stick, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, my dad was like, kind of like on the porch, you know, behind the door listening to it. And he, he knew what was going to happen. And he, he jumped out there. There's like six of them out there and, uh, ran them all off, you know, <laughs> kind of shit. Which uh, was cool as hell, but yeah. like uh, it bothered me because you know they're accusing me of stealing shit I never stole. Sure, and uh, you know, for my own demeanor, you know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna sort it out. And he goes, "Well, don't expect me to come down there and fucking follow you and bail you out." And I said, <laughs> "Don't worry about it. I won't be calling." Yeah, and uh, went down there and sorted it out. That kid was down there, and and the first thing I I told him, I looked at him and said, "Dude," and he about to shit his pants. And my dad came flying off the fucking porch. <laughs> <laughs> but he uh he goes uh you know oh, yeah I, I the it was behind the counter <laughs> oh, yeah. my bad and, and, <laughs> no sorry hey, dude uh, could have got himself shot like it makes me think of days and confused when the parent oh, yeah. there was somebody's mom or dad pulled the gun on yeah uh, the bullies well, were chasing real, the kids he's real snappy he had his his anger moments i you know yeah but uh, uh, he, was, he was protecting he what like was his when I when we were younger, it was a different kind of story. But yeah, I, he got a little violent here and there. But like I said, he once he had his brain aneurysm, he he was fucking as timid as anything. You know, he he didn't so get angry, interesting. You know, mm. it was the weirdest thing. But that and allowed for you of, to. Uh, it sounds like maybe heal some shit and bond with him, huh? Yeah, yeah, we did. Definitely. I mean, the fact that you really moments before he passed away. You were able to sit there with him and hold his hand. And, you know, the fact that you wanted to do that. Well, I was taking care of him. I was driving him to dialysis for, like, you know, the two weeks and stuff, you know, and helping out as much as that. I've been helping out ever since, you know, he's had his anger. Well, wow, you're such a fucking good dude. We, it, it almost makes me sick how good of a dude you are and how well you've handled your own trepidate or your own uh, life experiences, yeah. your own illness, <laughs> and everything just... It's like, I know, I know, I don't have to hypothesize. I fucking know I would not have handled it <laughs> as gracefully. And it's like when, when you got your diagnosis, you know, by the time we knew oh. about it, you were just on the track. Like, all right, I'll, I'm going to do what I got to do. You'd already. Oh, I had cancer. I was, you'd already, you know, yeah. But fatal. you don't have to. You don't have well, to do that. Well, it was that. designated as, you know, end stage renal failure, which is, you know, end stage, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There ain't no fixing it, and there ain't no coming back, so, without a transplant. But, yeah. Uh, don't kid yourself. <laughs> when I found out I had cancer, I, well, I really thought about taking my truck over the bridge a couple times. Well, that one time going home, you know, it, it came across my thought, and I was like, yeah, just don't do it. You'll probably just fuck up your truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's, there's was, no response was... you could have to that, at least in your head, that... I think anybody is going to say, no, that's incorrect. That's a huge thing. It, it's like grieving. It's like mourning itself. It's like, and at least in, internally, you know, there's no there's no wrong thing that is going to go through your head. Uh, what matters is how you actually act that out in the real world. Mm -hmm. And True story. Well, it was, it was hard in the sense that I really didn't have anybody. Even when it came down to my parents, it, I didn't have them there backing me up. Yeah. Uh, and they they were like that. They were, you know, throw you out in the fucking water and see if you swim. Yeah. You know, you, you swim and you drown. And that's how my, my parents have raised me. Um, and wild, for that matter. They didn't really care much. You know, it's like, are you taking off? All right, see you when you get back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was always, you know, fuck, I was smoking at 14, you know, so I was always hiding cigarettes, you know. In my, yeah. My, my uh, spandex pants. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't Just hide much in a spandex. Although behind the crippler, maybe uh, <laughs> a couple packs. <laughs> There's oh. always room. That's how I usually got caught. <laughs> well, why is your, your package all square? <laughs> <laughs> Take enough. me to the doctor. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what happened uh, there. But I, I, you know, what my answers were when I was starting dialysis was look at your dad. You know, I, I would ask my dad shit and he would get bothered by it. And my mom would stop asking your dad about dialysis shit. And it's like, 
What am I supposed to fucking do? I don't know what's going on. This wow. My first rodeo. He's been doing it for, you know, 12 years, but I have, <laughs> you know, it's my first year. Yeah. And uh, I had to live with it that way. And, and you couldn't, you, know, you couldn't get with peace it. from that. Uh, when it was tough because it's everything they tried to do to f fix me, I guess, just made me worse. Yeah. Uh, that's the main reason why in January um, I have to go back to Virginia Mason, be hanging out with Chris for the weekend. Heck yeah. And uh, go back and redo the tests, which is cool. I'm glad they called me back. I'm glad things are back kind of towards looking at getting a transplant because I'd really like to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lyle, life will start for you all anew when you get that transplant. I, It's not an if in my mind. I, I just have to believe that it's going to happen after all that you've been through, after all right. that you've endured and all the things that you've done right, which is pretty much everything. <laughs> Um, I, I just can't accept otherwise. And yeah, there's a lot of hoops that you still have to jump through, but the fact that you're even on that path again is, it's something I've been celebrating. I've been telling everybody is like, it's, cause people ask, they, they ask all the time, e either they listen to the podcast or it's family that knows you or friends that know you. They ask about you all the time and I, I give them updates and, yeah, uh, sure. the, the, the latest updates have been, I mean, obviously, uh, sharing the news about your dad has been, uh, obviously tough, but everything else about your health and where things are headed and it, it's been mostly good news and yeah. encouraging news. That's why Lyle Thompson ain't afraid of fucking death. <laughs> so, okay. Been there, done been that. Been there, yeah. <laughs> and you know. Bitch ass it, death. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's just like alcoholism i suppose you know the those those seven rules you learn in rehab about um uh, accepting and, i think uh, there's 12 lyle i don't think he made it yeah, all the way through but steps. anyway <laughs> finish your thought <laughs> i think i skipped out all those rules about being an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> give up got as far well, as, the last as i did high school <laughs> it's, it's honestly it's the same thing with death it really is i mean i i had to look it in the eye and say yes you I'm have i'm gonna die and yeah. Dude, I'm serious. I, I went through all the steps. I was about ready to basically give away all my shit, you know, and, and be ready not to fucking leave a burden behind. Yeah. You know, make sure all my shit was paid for and fucking all my shit was And it was with. not hypothetical. It was not it was hyperbole. <laughs> you were literally so many times in the last couple of years on the verge of... I remember... I Maybe we I shared this on the podcast. Maybe I didn't. But I remember starting a few side text messages with just John Mark and Christopher. I'm like, look, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to do and I don't know what to think. I don't know. Uh, you know, if you're the praying type, whatever it is, but our brother Lyle is legitimately on death's door. <laughs> um, when I sent those messages, I didn't, I didn't think that Lyle was going to be with us the following week. There was a couple of times that that happened. The, that was in, when I was in uh, with COVID. Well, the mo yeah, yeah, COVID for sure. You, I mean, I couldn't talk to you. Like I couldn't get you on no. the phone in the hospital. And I heard the nurses talking in the background. I was like, I don't. Is he even capable of taking phone? They, I think they meant to mute it or put me on hold. They didn't. I heard them huddling, and I'm like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! And I was hearing this, and I was like, I. And then I, <laughs> you know, I finally got through to you text messaging. I was just happy to see that you read the messages and there were some days where you couldn't even respond. And then uh, you got I was to... in there for a month. And uh, yeah. the fact of the matter is I never brought my charger. So yeah, I had to borrow a nurse's charger to charge my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, again, I don't, I don't know what to say. None of us really know what to say, except you've been on our mind. And this is uh, something that, Obviously, Christopher can relate to on some level, and uh, John Mark and I, we've not really gone through this. Like, not, hey, you know, even if you've gone through it, it's it's never like. Oh, it never goes away. Well, you and, know, and, and it's it, never the it, same it, thing. Like, I, 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 when people they say, "I know what you're going through," I, I try to encourage know. people to not, to not use that phrase. There, there are other ways of saying this. Is, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm thinking about you. You know, it's just like. I, you know, I lost my father and it, 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 you know, they can share their story, but never say the phrase that I know what you're going through because you don't, it, even if it's a very, very similar thing. And sometimes you do know what 
a lot what they're going through, but you don't know them. You don't know them, their, how they were raised. You don't know their family situation. You don't know the ins and outs of all the things. I avoid phrases like that, and I invite you all to avoid phrases like that because in sure. a way it's almost gaslighty. You know, it's almost like I'm going to take away the, the power of what you just told me by my own story. That's not the time to do that. It's just... And I couldn't possibly, you know, you know more than anyone that is still on this earth, Lyle, <laughs> how much mm. shit I've gone through. And I would never oh, yeah. uh, claim to know what you're going through with yeah. this. Well, and I don't know what the like fuck I can say, but I feel like, I, 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 uh, are you, are you, are you genuinely doing okay? <laughs> is there anything that we can do? Yeah. No, I, there's nothing I don't think anybody could do. Uh, it's just something you just, it's time. It's a day by day thing. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I got a lot of great memories. Yeah. How's your mom doing? She's doing How's as well your... as she can be. Yeah, I mean, okay. she's she's at home, and I'm, and that's the other thing. Now I'm, uh, I feel like I'm, you know, uh, I got a lot of tasks on my hand come this spring because they're gonna have to go there and uh, tidy up the place. Yeah. But, you know, the house needs all windows. It's, you know, there's a lot of yard work and uh stuff that's been overgrown that needs to be taken out well look there's yeah. there's something i can help with let me know yeah when you're doing that i can i can do sure. some grunt work i'd run, be, run I'd be happy off. to uh <laughs> yeah uh help out in yeah. any way and i can bring other people to help uh, you sure. i'm sure you could find a, a, an army of people to help out with that but please yeah. don't hesitate to ask for help for that 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 sure. doesn't have to fall onto you not all of it. No, no, but it's it's the only one that'll do it. <laughs> I know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Helps. Well, any last words before we? Uh, I mean, on that topic, <laughs> I should I should be more specific after that conversation. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> any last words on that topic, Lyle? It's uh, you know, it's good to talk about it. I, you guys, are about the only guys I talk to. That that's you why know. I. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what this episode was going to be. I got some stuff ready to go. I know Chris has some stuff ready to go, but I knew we have not talked. We have talked. I haven't talked with Lyle uh, other mm -hmm. than over text messages, and those have been very few. Um, yeah. you, you guys are my social, my yeah. social talks. Well, this is the time. Yeah, <laughs> because and, um, be between dialysis, you know, I got the nurses to talk to you, but that's, that's about <laughs> it. I don't, well, I don't go out. God so. bless those nurses, huh, Lyle? Uh -huh. Well, I know you can't cheers with us, Lyle, um, but I'm going to pour me a, a strong one here. And Salute. I'm going to cheers to Lyle Thompson original. Uh, yeah, the OG, the senior. OG. I didn't know him well enough, but uh, he created one of my favorite human beings. And uh, cheers. And our thoughts are with you, Lyle. And I know that everyone Thank listening uh, agrees. And now, where do you guys want to go from here? I got a whole bunch of weird sex facts. <laughs> so right. here's, the, here's the thing. Before Lyle's dad passed, um, we were going to record earlier last week. A, a, a whole bunch of shit popped up. And I, I was I was sick for like three weeks. I got this cold from fucking hell. It's taken everything in my power to not cough even now uh, and too. almost a month into it. But, um, so I had planned the last show we did was fairly dark. The last couple shows we've done were fairly dark. And I got a few emails. It was like, we got some feedback, uh, not bad feedback, just like feedback that people had some visceral <laughs> responses. Yeah. To well, like, God, I, I, I want to read Katie's Sergio Jeff's comment, but I kind of want, I think we should reach out to her to share that's that. what i'm thinking yeah like it was so it shocked me to hear i mean like it's on our facebook page you're welcome to log on and look at it i don't think they yeah. would have shared it if it was something so private but no i was like you know gosh if you'd ever like to come talk about this on the show i know it's really personal uh and, and now i want to know because i i don't really look at the page so well it's the uh well chris go ahead and sum up i'm gonna refill my whiskey here it, the, we know we talked about that, um, <clears throat> like crematorium, the the funeral home that was oh, just that, yeah. stacking up bodies. Mm -hmm. She had some personal experience with uh, somebody 
that, did that. yes and oh, the yeah. same one and and oh god it sounds like it was tragedy on tragedy it was just like an awful thing and she, she was like left a comment basically saying i didn't realize i'd need a trigger warning for this episode um you know and i don't think she was like giving a shit really she was just sharing it's a hug circle We're yeah totally circle. yeah uh-huh. hugs. <clears throat> fuck shall we uh move on to some <laughs> Sure. Kooky sex Very facts, tough. friends. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, some of these are somewhat historical based, and uh, some of them are more, I guess, scientific or studies that have been done. And I just thought, where do you go? And I knew that mm. if we were going to have time to talk about anything else on this show, this is probably a good place to shift gears and we'll just end with this. Well, we'll end with this before we go on to uh, some weird triv, which I'm excited about, but I might get a Christopher fired. The, the more hired (laughs) or hired. We'll see the bulk Mm -hmm. of the first half of this list. And I might go through these pretty quickly and get down to some of the more quicker tidbits, but the first half where it's more historically based, uh, 100% 100% of it came from list verse. It came over like five or six different uh, categories <laughs> and different list verse lists, as they might say. So I cherry picked from, and they're mostly from Egypt, ancient Egypt, and ancient Greece. But let's just get through some of these interesting facts and here. <laughs> historical is what I almost <laughs> said. Historical <laughs> facts about uh, mm-hmm. sex. So, Six. starting number one, the pharaohs of Egypt whacked off into the River Nile in life-affirming oh. ceremonies. <laughs> what does that mean, life-affirming? Like, <laughs> I'll give you a little like taste a baptism? Here. Like, oh, here comes Johnny down the river. <laughs> oh, no. Well, right here's a summary of the deets. The, <laughs> well, yeah, Johnny, Johnny's going down the river with, whether he wants to or not. <laughs> The Nile River (laughs) was revered for its life-giving properties by the ancient ones. The symbol, Mm. the symbol is, (laughs) yeah, I'm drunk. The symbolism (laughs) here is pretty powerful when we consider the fact that the ancients viewed time in a circular format rather than a linear succession of moments. In fact, the ancient Egyptian word for semen, progeny, Uh, and describing the floods of Nile were all the same word, which was mitwit. (laughs) There's no vowels there. It's empty. WT. Keep going, going, baby. I'm going to mitwit. I'm going to mitwit. No, we're we're done. I I just mitwitted. (laughs) I beat you. didn't mitwit inside me, did you? Oh, no. (laughs) No, baby. I'm pretty sure that. uh... Oh, I know myself. (laughs) So picture that. The pharaohs whacking off into the Nile ceremoniously uh-huh. <laughs> uh, in front hey, I of got, all. I got one. Um, I got a funny one that, you know, I watched a lot of the YouTube shorts, and mm-hmm. uh, this is one of them. It was similar to the what we we're discussing. They were saying that uh, <laughs> rim jobs, you know, doing rim jobs, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, started way before a fucking toilet paper was invented. He goes, wrap your mind around that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Well, Ew. But rivers, yum, yum. but rivers existed and leaves existed. Here's oh, the sure. thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> side thing. side bar. Bar. Well, we're talking about Here's sex thing. now, so I guess anything goes. Um, eating ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm on team it, both getting and receiving. <laughs> we talked about it fairly mm-hmm. recently. We don't need to go in <laughs> too deeply. Yes. But eating ass is interesting because it's one of those things where we have all well if if eating ass is on your menu we have all mm-hmm. been in a, a position to be like hmm i'm going to do a little i it's almost like you could make a rhyme about it here if you're worried about the hygiene <laughs> being a little iffy get down in it and do a sniffy sniffy i am a firm believer in that get down on there get a Take little inspection I think you're going to know whether this is a tricky scenario or not. I think most people (laughs) who are dating people in, at least in first world scenarios, um, and people who don't work in construction, 
no uh, offense. I think <laughs> the average human being is way cleaner down there than you would guess. And it's not like you're going to get a face full of shit. Again, unless there is a problem, unless someone has not had time to deal with things. Do you clean um, up a little? Now, I have been in a giving and or taking scenario where it's like, this isn't a good time. This ain't a good time for that. And you'll just gently mm -hmm. steer the head away. It's like, no, move it up a little south or a little north, I suppose, depending on the position. <laughs> like, how much farther? Where's <laughs> your ticket? Well, Go back up and start that nail and then keep on going back up. <laughs> <laughs> but the same thing goes for, for uh, you know, giving. You go down there, and you're like, oh, no, I, I don't think you're quite ready for this. Uh, or maybe I'm not quite ready, ready for this. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 gonna go boot up right now. <laughs> um, so the whole thing of hygiene well, concerning eating ass, I think it's, hmm. it's, it's an, I have it's never adult. really, I've yeah. only a couple of times found it to be a problem, and usually... The problem is me. <laughs> it's, like, it's been oh, what sure. I would call a swampy day. <laughs> There's some days yeah, and some not, events where it's I'm like, not, hey, oh, ain't nobody eating ass tonight. Ooh, I went to that concert with John Mark and went to that public bathroom. and <laughs> He's like, I gotta tell it. John Mark when we get back to the hotel. It's like, look, not tonight, honey. Um... <laughs> when, you're, when you're really drunk, sometimes when you go down on a girl, you know, it's only like an inch away. You know? <laughs> If you get too sloppy drunk, you know, you never know what you're down there. Like, you know? Oh, well, see, that's the gateway. <laughs> now, now, you don't want to go too hog wild because I do believe well, it's sex is such a funny thing because obviously we are all about consent. Um, yeah. and we should be, but we don't typically stop to ask, is it okay if I go down on you? Is it okay if I lick your tit? Is it okay if I drop a digit in the old stink? Although I would, I would say if you're going to hear somebody ask permission for anything, it's typically going to be ass related, right? Sure. Mm. Like I've never had well, anyone yeah, ask sure. permission to suck my cock. I've never asked or heard anybody ask permission to lick a nipple or nibble or bite even really hard. Well, but the, I've, the I've had a lot of people say, is. is this okay? You know this? You, well, see, you, you go this old way? enough. <laughs> Well, we're, we're old enough that, like, back in the day, you know, when you were experimenting and, and, you know, reaching out to a significant other, you know, it was between a man and a woman, and when you were together, it was just, it was a hot fucking sexy mess, you know, because you were together, that made it consensual, you know, for the most part. It's uh, different times now. <laughs> well, I think Would you like to please sign this piece of paper before we have sex, please? Well, I did. see, I think if you're paying attention to certain how do you say this atmospheres it might feel like <laughs> that needs to be that way but we we're not really doing that right like, like we still when you get together with somebody you get hot and horny and it just kind of goes yeah. where it goes if somebody stops to ask permission it wouldn't throw me off my game um no. so i have no problem with it but i I haven't experienced. I mean, have you guys actually experienced someone stopping other than ass stuff or other than putting no. something in oh. you that <laughs> that might not be traditional, shall we say? Um, have you ever had anyone in recent times? <laughs> uh, I think like you said, once you're once you're, you know, in it, there's like a there's, there's a an line. unspoken <laughs> consent. Like any, anything up to this line is probably but fair. that's fair where it gets yeah. fucking tricky. Because <laughs> sometimes... Yeah. Well, you know, in the ass play shit, you know, I always call that. That's uh, after shower sports. Well, or we during, talked about this re sports. recently. <laughs> I don't... Man, I ain't into a super fuck... I ain't into a super clean body. I don't care what part we're talking about. It says a lot about you, Ron. I don't want to taste it's, it's soap. strange. I don't want to taste lotion. I don't want to taste perfume. For... I want to taste... <laughs> Body stuff. Shit. I don't want to taste poop. <laughs> I, and, <laughs> I feel like we've gone full circle here because I want it raw. You know what I mean? <laughs> raw, raw dog. I want. I want an intimate experience with a human. Yeah. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna get here. I'm, I'm gonna skip ahead because obviously I'm gonna have to skip ahead because this one took 20 minutes. But <laughs> there's something coming down the pipe uh, on this list that I thought was interesting. And <laughs> I think pipe. it oh, no. speaks... <laughs> coming down or coming up? I can't know. Uh, I can tell that I'm 
comes uh, out way too hot. You know, that, that does surprise me about you being the germaphobe that you are. Like, I know you're a bit I... of a germaphobe. Uh, yeah. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a it's, surprise. It's true. It's true. It's like but, telling me you all of a sudden you don't like to watch the woman take their clothes off, you know? God knows you do. Yeah. Oh, no, I definitely do. Well, <sighs> okay, so I don't want an STD. As much as the next person, I don't want an STD. Sure. So I, yeah. I am a, a condom-heavy lover. Always have been. Um, On your tongue? Huh? On your tongue? Little, no, little, see that's that's where it's uh, that's where it falls apart. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, I, but knock on wood, <laughs> knock on this wood. Um, oh. I've only had one. Well, I don't even know that I had an STD, but I'm pretty sure that I had chlamydia. Someone that I was seeing uh, uh, had hmm. chlamydia, and I went to get tested. But when they you get tested for chlamydia. They just give you the antibiotic to take care of it because, like, yeah, like yeah. this will yeah. cure you before we even get the results of your test. And they fucked my test results up. <laughs> so, mm. uh, but I'm pretty sure, even though we used condoms, I'm pretty sure that I probably I, I had no symptoms. But I can say that I probably at least kind of had uh, chlamydia at one point. What Other is, than that, what is the what is the the uh, side effects of having chlamydia? I don't know. Oh, so I. I do. I am very responsible when it comes to pecker protection <laughs> for myself uh, or pregnancy mm-hmm. protection. I'm very, you know, I I have always been paranoid about getting somebody pregnant, and I've even way more than getting an STD. Even back in the day when it wasn't super easy to clear up an STD, I was way more worried about getting it a buddy pregnant. So I've always been on. It just never was a second thought, especially with some sort of casual encounter. You grab the fucking condom. I've told you this before, and I know I've talked about it on the show before. I am shocked about how many women are like, what What do you need that for? Like, I, I, I'm on birth control, or I've had it. He's like, That's crap. well, do you want me to tell you? Should I list all the things that we need this for? <laughs> this is not just birth control. Anyway. I my my situation is a lot different because I wasn't really I was I was always with chicks that were older than me in the in the sense you know so in my thirties I was dating girls that are in their forties and yeah, so they had uh, hysterectomies know, so <laughs> and yeah they all pretty much had hysterectomies and they couldn't get pregnant so it wasn't a big deal with me but I made sure that like we were together when I wasn't rapping you know but like. If I when I first met them, you know, I would rap. Just oh yeah, that well for sure. When I was in a long term relationship with anybody or monogamous, um, the condom was optional. You know, if if the person wasn't on a birth control of their own, then it was uh, cyclical and very touch and go. <laughs> but okay. I am a huge proponent of condoms. But that is more about protection. I don't know the germaphobe thing. <sighs> I'm not going to fuck somebody with a cold. <laughs> but, and I don't know if they have herpes. So that's, I, I, that's the best orgasm it, ever. Is the answer all, somewhere between those two? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I don't know. It's a weird fucking thing, sex. But holy shit, did we take a... When you could that was the first and one. And blow your nose, too. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Man, this is, this is a sexy conversation. We well, got weird. Well, here's another one. <laughs> she got weird, bro. Here's a little tidbit. <laughs> uh, according to recent studies, and again, this is based off list first uh, research, the overwhelming majority of the people who watch transgender porn are, who do you guys think? Probably mm, not. Men. Be more specific. Mm, straight straight men. Okay. John Mark, what do you think? The overwhelming, uh, I would, I would overwhelming agree. majority of people who watch trans. I would agree with Chris. Lyle? I, I'd say bi men. Men that are bisexual. It is almost 90% straight men that watch transgender mm. porn. Wow. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I've watched some transgender porn. I went through phase. <laughs> so I'm one of those straight men. I've never had... I mean, other than this dirty Santa photo shoot that I just did, which was got pretty fucking uh, explicit. I gotta be honest. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to share some of those photos on the uh, Facebook page in the not too distant future. But these were paid for by 
people in the public. It wasn't uh, me putting it on as local photography company. Anyway, um, that was the closest I ever got to any kind of gay sex. <laughs> there was some uh, guy on guy stuff happening there. Never, never was my thing. I'm 100% hetero, but uh, I, I was intrigued by some of that shit that I was watching for a while. So that didn't surprise me, but apparently it surprises a lot of people. 90% of transgender trans, uh, porn. Women out there that are gorgeous. You know those, uh, the binaural beats <laughs> that you can listen to uh, for like meditating or... Um, it's actually tied to the CIA uh, gateway project, which I'm bringing a story in the not too distant future about that. But the, it's this notion of frequencies that are very close to each other. One's happening in your right ear, the other's happening in your left ear. They're not quite lined up. So they cause this sort of chaos in your brain. And depending on what that frequency is, like there's one that's supposed to be good for concentration, one for meditation, one for sexual arousement, whatever. It's kind of like that. There's something happening in your brain where you can't quite get, you can't quite connect the dots, but it's intriguing. And you're like, huh, there's, there's something in there. That's how I would mm. uh, sum up something like that, where a straight man might uh, enjoy some trans ass porn. Uh, moving on. This is kind of interesting. Your sex life can affect your wages and often does. Earlier this year, a researcher from uh, Anglia Ruskin University analyzed a year-long study of Greek household finances and found that those who had sex four or more times a week earned significantly, what do you guys think, more or less than those who didn't? I'd Probably more. Mm. Maybe you're feeling confident about your life. Uh, yeah. Definitely that's, more. That's what sex is about. You're confident. You're, uh, yeah. Definitely you're more. more but this conflicts with some other studies that show that poor people have more sex than wealthy people. So, well, that's uh, I don't know. Else, but this particular study <laughs> says uh, people earn significantly more uh, who yeah. are having more sex. Now, before you go trying uh, <laughs> anything as absurd as upping your sex life in hopes of a raise, it should be pointed out that one probably doesn't cause the other. Instead, the sort of people who have lots of sex are most likely to be happy, energetic, and have high self-esteem. Exactly the type who tend to flourish in a corporate environment, but not always. <laughs> one, mm -hmm. one might point to uh, one or two of the richest people on the planet and uh, mm -hmm. say who... I don't know if they have high self-esteem. <laughs> They're projecting what they think might look like high self-esteem. But anyway, this was a year-long fucking study. Um, so, speaking of wages, your wages also may affect your preferred breast size. Mm, In a bizarre experiment, 266 men were recruited from across the socioeconomic spectrum. They were each then shown pictures of five women with varying breast sizes and asked to rate their attractiveness. By a wide margin, poorer men preferred the women with comically large breasts, while the rich mm. guys were cool with less top-heavy gals. Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm that guy. You think you're... I, you know, more than, more than a handful, you just kind of sprain your thumb. Kind of, I get that feeling. But I like big boobs, too. Mm-hmm. Well, you know? this does seem you know what it comically me, large actually? boobs. What, what, it, it's not the boobs, it's not the ass. Typically, it's either the face or the stomach. That'll get me just mm. every time. Yeah. <laughs> Tummies, abdomens, midsections in general are a very visual er erotogen zone, as they say. Of course, we don't all agree with what we prefer, but yeah, that's yeah, definitely like something that people notice. That's why sure. it's forbidden in certain cultures. Uh, moving on, here's a headline that'll get you: Women. <laughs> Sorry, gals, I didn't. I didn't do this study. Women are attracted by watching monkeys have sex. Okay, that's weird. Some of you has some explaining to do. Uh, uh, don't shoot the messenger here. Growing. This is just science. So, in 2009. Uh, Meredith Cheevers decided to find out once and for all what women really want. She did this by inviting a large group of female test subjects to watch 
video images on a screen and rate how aroused they made them feel. Then to make sure that no one was cheating, Cheevers also connected each of them to a Plesth... Ples Plez the more, more graph? And I, Nailed it. I can't nail that in any lifetime, but it's a device <laughs> that sits inside the vagina and measures genital blood flow. In other words, and a lot of people don't realize this, but women get hard-ons too. Even down there, uh, the blood flows down there just like it does for, <laughs> for us. Clitoris. Uh, and Can you it, say clitoris class? The clitoris sits inside the, the vagina and measures genital blood flow. And what this device revealed was something extraordinary. Literally, <laughs> literally every one of the women that took part in the study experienced significant arousal when watching hmm. a clip. A, a clip. <laughs> I combined the, wow. the next two words. A clip of chimpanzees. Having Climp. a sec. <laughs> Climp. Wow. Climp.com. I do not <laughs> advise going to Climp.com unless you're a woman, and apparently that's what you all are into. I'd advise not looking at monkeys. Hundred percent <laughs> of them got oh, horny, weird. at least physically. Well, they're, they're poo flingers. They like to fling their poo. So <laughs> you never know what they're going to be yeah, doing. Everyone, everyone talks about women being all up in their heads about horniness, and it's true. But we're guys are the same way. We we do have mental connectivity with our horniness. But one hundred percent of these women had physical horny responses to watching chimpanzees have sex. Uh, it was less marked than when watching other clips. They showed all huh. sorts of clips, even other animals. Uh, like horses so, and shit? <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I assume so. Elephants and shit? Like fucking rhinos and shit? But here's what's interesting. <laughs> None of those women reported feeling aroused, suggesting that hmm. the response was automatic and probably animalistic. Primal, I mean, if you think about it, chimpanzees, are, they're, they're going to be closer to our DNA yeah. and our anatomy and our entire uh, evolution than any other animal that you're going to see. <laughs> I've, I don't know. I found that interesting. I really don't think that women are getting off on watching uh, chimps have sex, but Sky says that there's something next level <laughs> happening down there. I don't fucking know. <laughs> All right, where are we at time-wise? I'm going to make this... I'll do the rest of these historical ones because there's some interesting shit concerning the Greeks and the Egyptians. I'm going to go through some of these more tidbit ones and we'll do maybe five more minutes. Uh, now, here's an interesting thing. I have been ridiculed for having sex with my socks on. <laughs> no, that's bad. <laughs> on or off? I don't... I, I, you say? I miss, on socks uh, on. on oh yeah you've got to take them off i i got in trouble <laughs> well, you want to here's you want to eat the asshole of a lady that's got some skid marks going on that's your business ron but you take those fucking socks off <laughs> god damn it let those toes breathe no here's, it's it's for gription is what that shit's for <laughs> when you got socks you got no gription so if you're you know <laughs> doing a girl doggy style on top of well, bed you gription is <laughs> go for it. have you ever fucking slipped doing that oh my god oh, i got horrible. this so it ruins the whole night. I mean, it's, well, sure it's was. Just... Listen, I have never thought about it. It's only been pointed out by other people that while wow, you're wearing your socks, it's like, I I don't think about it. I think I just I tend to sleep with my socks on, and I know there's a a big debate about how hygienic that is. Um, but you know, I I change my socks every day. I don't, I don't walk around my house wearing socks. I have pets. Elderly pets, they leave troubling things on the floor. I, I'm wearing <laughs> shoes until I go to bed. So I don't think my socks are that gnarly unless there's some shit growing in my shoes, which is entirely possible. But I just, I don't think about taking them off until someone else points them out. I don't mind do you having sleep my in socks them? off. Do you, do you sleep in your socks? I tend to, yeah. Hmm. Oh, all, no. Do you all kick your socks hmm. off when you sleep? No, I can't oh, yeah. sleep with socks on. I get oh, it. I, 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 like, I get I it. I get it. Like I, well, if, I if it's pointed out why. to me and I'm thinking about it, it's like, oh yeah, I got to get these off. I just don't. It doesn't occur to me. Well, it's hmm. it's for like I said, gription, man. If you you try to <laughs> do the dirty, well, all about performance sports no. in bed, you know. <laughs> if you're doing the dirty and you're standing up, 
you have a big possibility of hurting yourself very mm -hmm. badly. <laughs> you can slip and fall. Because when you're going forward, she's pushing oh, back, or okay. she's pushing forward while you're pushing forward, and that just knocks you back. And then your your socks, they slide on the carpet just, you know, a few inches back. And, and Interesting that, that Lyle said the carpet. <laughs> you're, you're like you're like, two, the you're like two feet Not away from her by then. You know, okay. it's, it's, it's a mess. you got to take your socks off for encryption. Well, here is what this list has to say. Forget lingerie. If you want to increase your chance of having an orgasm, especially a powerful one, keep your socks on during sex. Says mm. research done by the University of Groningen, <laughs> which mm. I like to think of <laughs> as <laughs> Monaghan. Uh, although, well, well, I guess Groningen. Kind of lingerie, of. because lingerie is pretty hot. I, can be. Apparently, oh, some can people be. like... Uh, <laughs> Ooh, I like, I'm like, like five years away from using the garters to oh. pull my socks up. <laughs> Isn't that technically laundry? <laughs> I'm going to uh, say right now, I'm going to say garters are hot, but not on Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit it belt? out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to edit that to, to say garters are hot, Ron. Uh, I, I, <laughs> well, I, I had a girlfriend that used to visit me in an uh, overcoat. And she would uh, knock oh. on my door in the middle of the night, yeah. wearing an overcoat, and she would flash me, and she'd be in all in lingerie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh my god, oh, you drove clear across town wearing this?" I yeah. guess she did one time, and That's they were do <laughs> they were doing road work, and she was stuck in traffic, and she was like, <laughs> kind of trying to pull everything together so nobody could see. Uh, when you accidentally weeks. bring someone else into your sex play, mm -hmm. well, the study goes on to say, no one is sure exactly why this works, but one theory is that in order to orgasm, you need to be totally relaxed and anxiety-free. And cold feet can interfere with the ability to really get into sex, especially for yeah, women, the study right. says. Uh, says Fran Walfish. <laughs> These are some made-up names. they got to be <laughs> uh, psychotherapist and sex uh, therapist author. One, one, uh, I, think, I think it's probably more accurate to say... Do what you got to do to be comfy. I think if you're comfortable, you're going to be more relaxed. And if you're more relaxed, oh, you're going to sure. be more susceptible to uh, pleasure on any level. Uh, here's an, another interesting tidbit. According to studies, even though we are talking about more sex, apparently we are having way less of it. <laughs> I wonder why. I got to believe that online porn has a huge mm. hand in this. Uh, no pun intended. So. Something like that. Uh, although this... I would definitely say that to the youth, like younger people, because yeah, they, well, they were like raised with it. I mean, if they had people that weren't really taking care of their internet, you know, and like yeah, but like it's so yeah, much more prevalent. But... Like I, you can have it anytime, any place. You want to find two, you know, trans women. Yeah. It's like oh, well, I can have that up in five seconds. Hold on, boop boop boop. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I actually, you know, I, 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 it's no secret. I've shared that I enjoy porn on this podcast, and there have been times this last year because I've been. I have been alone for a while now where I'm like, I really need to stop. I, I do worry about what the effect of having my ultimate, you know, desires, <laughs> my fucking fingertips yeah. have done to me. Like, I, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I don't think it's good for us. I don't, but I'm man, it, it sure is fun. Healthy for it. Well, it's, uh, it's healthy to bust a nut every once in a while, for sure. Just for your prostate mm -hmm. in general. You know, if you're doing that with your imagination or you're doing it looking at your phone, on, I think know, trying to find a mate. I think like try. everything else, it's about moderation and it's about yeah. moderation too. Yeah, you, totally. You know, some people shouldn't drink soda pop. <laughs> it's just that you got to know yourself. You got to know what works for you, what works for your body, what works for your, um, your psyche. And some people could watch porn all day, every day <laughs> and have a perfectly yeah. uh, healthy sex life with their partner. Other people can't go anywhere near it because it's just they get they lost in that fantasy and then that fantasy can never live up to or real life can never live up to that fantasy. Um, but according to this study, they point out to the lower the lowered libido levels that likely have more to do with uh, an increasingly less healthy diet, increasingly less, less active lifestyle. You know, we weren't we weren't sitting around playing video games for 15 hours 30 years ago. And these studies go back uh, about 20, 30 years ago. So it's like, <laughs> uh, what's that? I said, what, you weren't? 
Well, I kind of was. I was I was actually playing video games for that long back then. I don't now, but it's not you know video games. I'm pulling that out of my ass. It, video games, I know ne- what you're Netflix, saying, so just just the things that we have to occupy our brains, just the entertainment we can blast our 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 minds with, and the the circadian yeah, rhythm that we're fucking with by this constant light. 3 a.m. in the morning. It, all of that has a drastic effect on your libido. and But I, I would still wager it's, well, I think it's probably 50-50. It's probably half technology and half um, our shitty diets and our, our, just our well, sedentary lifestyles. Like we're, we, we think we're active if we walk a mile a day. You know, that's the reality of modern Americans. We think we're physically fit if we take our dog out and walk them around the block a couple times a day. Um, that's not a lot of fitness if we're spending the rest of the time sitting in front of a computer being blasted with all these. Uh, is it blue light? That doesn't sound right. But it's a, the blue blocking light is what the computer glasses are. That's supposed to help with your uh, circadian rhythm, but it doesn't matter if you're looking at a light and two inches from your face under the blankets at 3 a.m. Like a lot of us do. I do it. Um, (laughs) All of that's affecting uh, your libido. So, Well, could be that more than porn. What's kind of weird, I think, uh, is like when we were kids, you know, we've talked about it before on the podcast, like we'd have to stumble through the woods and find like fucking porno mags, mm-hmm. you know. There was no internet, so like you would, you know, if you're lucky enough to find like an uncle that left a porno laying out, they could snag uh, without him knowing, you know. Kind of that's how we got our rocks off. And you would whack day. it to the same image a thousand <laughs> fucking times. A day. Like now, yeah. like, see sure. the funny thing is, even about that era of porn. It's like we had, we've always had porn for any anybody that's alive on this here show. We have all had porn. We've all had access to it, but not like it is now. You don't yeah, have to I see the notice. same performer. You could watch porn every day for the rest of your life and not see the same performer. Um, if you're, you know, if you're really working at it. Um, sure. So even back in the day, porn was more romantic and more, I suppose, <laughs> not monogamous but uh closer to that to a, a, a traditional relationship is like i got a stack of mags i know every one of these women <laughs> front to back <laughs> you know what I'm saying? now it's like it's just whatever pops up even that is probably a huge evolution in how our brains can even wrap it self around that aspect well, and of that, attraction and, and sexuality where, like in a, I, that's where i think also an addiction could come from you know, is once you, you yeah. go more, into the more, internet more, more, and more, you more, started more. seeing porn for the first time, you're fucking just, you know, <laughs> you're like Popeye on one arm and skinny on the <laughs> other. <laughs> That's why I always switch hit, Lyle. <laughs> you know, until, until, you know, you get sick of it, I'm sure, you know. I, I think we all been there where we kind of had stents where, like, it was like, fuck it. Yeah. You know, sure. I'm alone forever anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, here's the uh, thing. Masturbation's kind of awesome. <laughs> so so if that's yeah. uh, your sex life from here on out, uh, uh, terrible. I'm going to end on this one. I got a whole bunch more, but I'm going to I'm going to do this as a two-parter. We'll finish these cuz there are so many more things that I rounded up. But because I I touched on this earlier, <laughs> no pun intended, um I want to go back to the pubic hair thing because I thought this kind of tied into where we're going with hygiene to some degree. Scientists have often debated about the true purpose of uh, our pubic hair. And it's likely a few different things. They all agree, you know, hygiene, chafing or anything else. But I thought it was interesting that the main theory is that pubic hair enhances (laughs) in a lot of ways uh, the scent of our pheromones so that even going hmm. all the way back to cave people we would know mm, there's something interesting about that spot Ross Iyer <laughs> we uh, are animals after be, all and uh, you know I we don't have fur. fur we don't oh go ahead Bob. well I think it would be kind of like more for protection you know because like you, 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 you that's what I thought too 
Well, your, your berries would be dangling and you'd be running through like some shrubbery. <laughs> and then it would guard you from getting your wiener fucking whacked by shrubbery. How fucking or much hair do you got going on down there, La? You got hair that's going to protect you from a It's a battle. In the sense of pubic hair. The battle. It's like a shield. You know? I challenge you to a duel between you, him, that mm. other person, and my pubic hair. You talk I sweet don't... to me and I'll show you my lance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. the other thing about yeah. that is pubic hair grows in such different ways. Like some people have an entire jungle from navel to Ooh. the top of their crack. Other people oh just have, you know, like a little a little bit of bush, a little bit of side hair if they don't manicure it, and that's all. Sure. So with that so in mind, it does make little. sense that it's not really protecting a thing it's not really i mean hygiene what the the sweatiest swampiest parts aren't always covered by pubic hair i do i do understand the chafing concerning my balls like i I keep my balls nice and trim but when you when you go like full-on um how does one say bowling ball smooth you, you uh-huh. notice, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. especially a couple of days later, it's like, whew, what do we, you know, I don't know, man. He's like, a, Oh, it's the weirdest thing. It's, it seems like my balls get droppier when they, uh, they're bald. Oh, like that's that. the they success just, of they age, like. <laughs> they, well, they, they, they hang lower <laughs> than, uh, if hang I not, you know, not so, when I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, they have a, a low roll as it is, but like mm-hmm. you shave them, they just kind of like, go even lower <laughs> <laughs> i don't know to me the the thing that's most consistent with the different styles of pubic hair and the different ways that humans grow their pubic hair i think the pheromone thing makes a lot of sense because it it probably collects sweat and you know a natural funk <laughs> we can use a sexual nice. phrase uh in a way that mm-hmm. enhances the and going back to what i was saying i respond to those things i respond to those it's not it's not a face full of poop it's not a fucking <laughs> vagina or a pubic hair filled with pee <laughs> dried pee Ew. It's just the, the natural essence of a woman. I fucking respond to that. I think most of us respond to those odors even if we don't, we're not aware of it. I think that's a a big part of human nature, and I think that's why. Sure, yeah, uh, pheromones and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It, like uh, there's something to be said about not overly deodorizing or perfuming or washing certain areas. You want to keep them clean, you want to oh, keep them dude. safe. There's the rule. But don't you, fucking you know go rule. hog wild. <laughs> If it if it's if it smells like fish, make it a dish. If it smells like cologne, mm-hmm. leave it alone. Oh my god, Toys. Dear. <laughs> Toys. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> you know that rule. Uh, I know it now. I literally I never heard that before in my life. Don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> yeah. Probably I mean, what my dad would have said. Sometimes Lyle, you remind me of my dad in like this really sweet, endearing way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how about we take a quick little break? I'm going to save the rest of these for next week, uh, or which may be next month. We are going to, we might get one more in this month. I doubt it. I got so many things coming up. Um, So we might be starting all over in January. But we are going to do the shorter episodes. We're going to try to crank out. you get any feedback on that? Huh? I haven't gotten any any feedback feedback on it, no. But we only put up one episode last month, so I knew (laughs) That's true. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I still intend on doing uh, two news quizzes. So when we record, yeah. I'll have you know yeah. news quiz ready for both. I'm down um, whenever. I don't. I think you know. You know we just like start recording, hit the fucking clock, and you know when we get to 35 minutes, well, you know maybe the first episode's the episode we bullshit and catch up and talk yeah. about what's happening, and then you yeah. have a mini story for the second one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there may, work out great. there may be an occasional two-parter, but I don't want to handle it that way. I'm going to I'm gonna come yeah. up with some fresh shit for each episode, and uh, I don't think it'll be that hard to do. I think it's uh, something we probably should have done a long time ago, but uh, but I also us. want to actually record more often than we have been. I know you guys do, too. It's yeah, just we, I do too. You get out of the habit of something. You know, we could always mm-hmm. find a way and find time, but... 
between illnesses, do, especially this time yeah. of year, it's crazy. This time, if we could do two two of those a month, I mean, that would put us on track for four a month again, which would be great. Yeah, we'd be rocking and rolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the plan. All right, uh, yeah. real quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. I've been watching the the boardwalk. What is it? The uh... Boardwalk Empire. No. Yeah, it's pretty oh, good. Oh, it that's it's fucking. Good. That's one of the best shows of all time. It's pretty wow. good. Have you you not seen it, Chris? No, I haven't. John Mark, you seen Boardwalk Empire? Nope. What? Oh, it's good. No. What? Oh my god. Two seasons. You're the brain. For whatever reason, it just never was something that grabbed me that I thought would grab me, anyways. Oh what? yeah. You watch it. It's I promise crazy. you will love it. And the theme it's song crazy. is uh, Brian Jonestown Massacre. Mm. That is star. Did you, did you star see about the big study. fight that they had on stage the other day? Yeah, that's. Classic Brian's June. <laughs> yeah, they stopped the show and fucking had a totally <laughs> knock down, drag out Donnie Brook. Yeah. Did you ever watch the documentary Dig about I did, them? Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they used to fight a lot. Um, okay, um, go ahead. And... I, I had a, I had a story uh, that talk about that we didn't talk about because it's been so long. But uh, you remember when I was talking about my my one ball that was got really big. <laughs> Like, between work, like, if I would go out and physically, like, be active for eight hours or something, and then come home, like, my, my left nut would be huge. It would be almost the size of a, I, I would say a racquetball, you know, which is, it's pretty good size, right? That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, huge. that's a... It's pretty, it was, it hurt. You know? I would, <laughs> that's the I would size be, of a small apple, you know? I, well, yeah, but, like, I'd be, like, kind of bent over. It kind of hurt my abdomen, and, you know, the first thing I thought was, oh, fuck, I got a hernia, right? Um, but w- when I would go to bed <clears throat> and wake up the next morning, it would go down in significant size, right? So I'm, like, going, okay. And I, I've dealt with it for quite a while. And so finally I talked to the doctor about it. And uh, they uh, took me to the hospital, and I, I had my nether regions um, ultrasound. Your, nether, your Netherlands? Netherlands. Yeah, my Netherlands. We talked about this. My yeah, Netherlands. we did. So um, basically, the the opt on that, I went on my, my chart, and what they want me to do, instead of just going into the doctor and fucking dropping my jars and having them cut my balls and you know turn my head and cough, you know, for a hernia, that's the the that's the standard. Uh, it's been forever. Um, they want to uh, ultrasound my nut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they want to pop that baby out and and play with it for a while. Who doesn't, Lyle? <laughs> yeah, but it's a mess. When they do the ultrasound. My nut. They get it all. <laughs> See what's they get going all that on there. <laughs> well, so that that's the next step. That's what I get to do eventually. I, I'm not dealing with it right now. I'm gonna just you know deal with the dad thing. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. But, Got Once nut. that's taken care of, that will be easy. I just hang my nuts <laughs> out in my fucking underwear. <laughs> It'll be easy. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you ready for this? Ba, ba, ba. <clears throat> I am so ready. I've got a nice little quiz for y'all. Uh, four standard questions here. Hit it, Ron. Didn't I just? <laughs> oh, we can't hear it. Sure. Hired. Hired. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny is, uh, oh, sorry, I had that for some reason the well. audio wasn't the audio wasn't coming across for us, and all we could hear was your voice. So it sounded like this like acapella remix version of it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it turned down too low. <clears throat> we got. There. All right, guys, let's get right into this. <clears throat> Question one: uh, Did you guys know that the child actor Corey Feldman is also a musician? Have you heard any of his music oh, or seen yeah. or anything? Yeah, uh, I. He I, does. I very He's highly Michael inspired by Jackson Z stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's that guy is so fucking out there. Did you ever see that VH1 uh, like thing where he had his cor- uh, like Corey's angels or whatever? Yeah, the women yeah, that I did. He... Yeah, mm-hmm. wow. Maybe we talked about this. Why I probably yeah. know of it. It was it was on uh, <clears throat> like uh, daytime TV. <laughs> well, he's going on tour in 2024. He's opening up for a real specific band. What band is Corey Feldman gonna open up on a world tour for? Is it A? <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> huh. Okay. B. The Insane Clown Posse. 
Both believable for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Is it C? Limp Bizkit. Again. Did it all for the nookie. Mm-hmm. Did, it it <laughs> Did it all for the Miki. Did it all for the Miki. With arms wide open, with Creed. Creed. Oh, no. <laughs> Again, Corey Feldman's going to be going on tour with uh, this band opening up for them. Nickelback, Insane Clown Posse, Limp Bizkit, or Creed. Ronster. Oh, see. Eddie Money. <laughs> oh damn it <laughs> so where were you, you when know, i was writing funny. this i hadn't even thought of it um well uh, damn. they're gonna open up for them or they're opening up for them uh, uh he's he, opening, he's for, opening this band. for them okay so he's he's an opening act he's not like he's not the, the yeah, final yeah. Mm-hmm. so nickelback uh insane clown posse limp busy or creed okay most of those well all of them actually are Right there in what I would call the nostalgia zone for people who were probably coming of age, but also watched the Goonies <laughs> or Lost mm-hmm. Boys uh, mm-hmm. or License to Drive. Whew, so I can go on that. I'm, I gotta, I gotta think that this is probably ironic and maybe jokey, and that leads me to believe it's somewhere between ICP and. Mm-hmm. Limp Biz. Mm. I haven't heard much about ICP lately, but I've heard a lot about Limp Biz. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I'm just fucking shot in the dark. Limp Biz. Oh, Limp Biz. Mm-hmm. All right, round triple. You down for a C? John Mark. It's just about anybody could open for that fucking band if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with Limp Biscuit. Also, mm-hmm. sounds right. Sounds right. Mm-hmm. Three dollar bill, y'all. Oh, because you gotta think twice before you touch my body. Remember that one? I don't, is that the right lyrics? Yeah, I don't it know. isn't, but it's more appropriate for the modern age. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> before you <laughs> lick the butthole. <laughs> Hashtag new faith. You gotta, you gotta sniff it twice oh, before you touch the bone hole. Oh, brought it back circle, full circle. Ooh, well, you know right. who sung that, don't you? It was Lim Bisky. Mm-hmm. Lim oh, Busy, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, the Faith uh, version of Faith from mm-hmm. uh, George Michael. I I, in my very first band I was ever in, we that song was like wildly popular. And, and you guys I did it. A, you covered it. I played a I played a talent show. <laughs> we oh, fucking nice. played. We closed with Lim Biscuit's version of Faith. Oh my oh, god! Tell funny. me there's footage. This oh, is God. better than me was. in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish there was. And let me tell you, people fucking got into it. It was awful. Well, yeah. I could I could lullize in it and, and say that like Limp Biscuit seems like they have more of a of a, a crazy tour, you know, like a like a Lollapalooza, but like you know, with them in it and to handpick a few people. He was they they uh, they were really into uh, doing a lot of uh, covers and with playing with other people. Limp Biscuit. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm going with them. You go. Oh, Family Game here on the Limp Busy. I love mm-hmm. it. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we're safe here, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Question two: What is the best-selling car of all fucking time? What has sold the most models oh. of all time? Is it A a Ford Mustang? Okay. Is it B, a Toyota Corolla? Hmm. Is it C, the Volkswagen Beetle? Ooh. Or is it D, the Honda Civic? Of all time. <laughs> well, said you better think Mustang, twice. <laughs> I have to believe, has been around longer than the others, but I could be wrong. But, Mustang? Yeah, mm-hmm. but boy, I see my neck of woods. I see way more Civics. Corollas, that's a pretty common fucking car, especially back in the day. But I'm going to, I mean, just without overthinking it, I'm going to guess Civics. I'm going to go to Civics. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. What, re, re, repeat the question real quick. What's the best-selling car of all time, the model? Mustang, Corolla, Beetle, or the Civic? Does used car sales count here? Or are we talking new car sales here? I don't know. That's a really good question. I, I presume this is new car sales. Just how many have been sold off the lot. Okay. Not a user lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> a 
of all time. I got. I think I'm gonna stick with Civic on the Civic, just based okay. on how many of my fucking. Wait, 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 wait. Let me think. Wait, about wait, this. Wait, Let wait, me think wait, about wait. this for just a second. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you were going to say uh, uh, a Volkswagen Rabbit. I'm thinking <laughs> well, that just wouldn't. And this is. I'm, I'm guessing this Maybe. is global, not not America. I'm thinking on American standards here. America. That's what's yeah, changing my this mind is a, here. A global. This is a global, global sales statistic. Yeah. Oh, think about the population. Well, that changes a lot. And the import laws and all of that over in Japan and Europe. And you got to think about those cities that have to have smaller cars. That aren't in the U.S. Like oh, China. Oh boy, I'm really, I'm torn between the Civic and the Corolla now, because Toyota. <laughs> Just like my I, grandma was. Well, I she died. You here's know. She here's my. She wanted. <laughs> here's my logic. I feel like I see way more Civics than Corollas, but I know, mm-hmm. in, just in my life, in in, TVs and movies and things abroad, I see way more Toyotas, than I do any of those brands i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the corolla only based on corolla. the father brand which is toyota oh i mean okay. i bet it's fucking civic though yeah, if this Mark. was america i guarantee it's <laughs> civic but worldwide i gotta go yeah toyota <clears throat> i'm gonna go with the beetle hmm. i like it Rounded about strange. Of all time, uh, the Beetle? I know. Yeah, what the are, heck? Are they still being I, made? I yeah, sure. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I know. I still see the Beetle has come and got. Well, maybe Corolla has too. Yeah. I want to say that the uh, recently, I do remember, um, well, it might even be not that recent. It might have been 10 years ago. But the, uh, the <laughs> Honda was actually the most stolen car <laughs> yeah you know, and it was the it fit, accord it seemed like you'd have to sell them to, to get them stolen honda accords most um, stolen car well right time. now i guess my, my car uh is the most highly sought after car to steal the dodge challenger hmm. it's just because of hellcat they got a lot of power be able to get them. away faster than a fucking accord uh huh. it beats most cop cars too yeah um so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the honda my you first Civic. Very yeah, first car was a Honda Accord. I know the answer is Civic, but yeah. I remember at one point uh, seeing that Honda Accords were the most stolen cars in uh, America. Yeah. I, I had a, I think my first kind of car, car was a, a Mazda 626. Little you four-door. I don't hear about Mazda as much anymore. Is that still a company? Well, they're still Mazda. Uh, what's a Mazda? What's, yeah, yeah, I mean, what's a new yeah, Mazda, Mazda car? Cars. Cars. Yeah, huh? they're, they're nice cars. Zoom, zoom. Yeah. So, I, I I had a Mazda right before I had it was a CX five right before I got this Rav four. Oh, nice. And it was a great car. I really liked it, but uh, I just wanted that Rav four. Hmm. Yeah, I like mine too. The the older one. It was a, it was in the eighties, like an eighty eight or an eighty nine. But it was like, it was pretty suave, you know, suave. Mm-hmm. Swan, Rico, mm. European inside. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. oh, I, I could oh, be a pian in any car if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question three, gentlemen. What is a group of pandas called? I really like these uh, animal group na- uh, questions. I think I do they're too. fucking great. <laughs> What's a group of pandas called? What's an official name for a group of pandas? <laughs> is it a an accident? <laughs> That's an accident of pandas. Okay. <laughs> they don't fuck the often. <laughs> is it be a, t- a tumble? Oops. An accident. Oh, you ever see pandas just fucking falling around? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how around. they move. They kind of tumble. I don't. It's kind of tumble. Is it C, a caravan? <laughs> or is it D, a, a fucking embarrassment? Oh, that's embarrassing. There they go. of pandas. Pand party. <laughs> what is a group of pandas called? An accident, a tumble, a caravan, or an embarrassment? <laughs> an embarrassment of pandas. I'm secretly <laughs> rooting for that one, but I feel like accident makes sense because pandas are notorious. Like, aren't pandas notorious for not fucking to save their own species with them? Like, 
<laughs> a big thing. Like they just they have no interest. They have right. no fucking libido to save their own species. So, sedentary lifestyle. So a group would have to be a series of accidents. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with accident. Okay. John Mark. I, I love an embarrassment of any animal. <laughs> Uh-huh. Like, sorry about my embarrassment of beaver out there, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> you've said that before in a different context. <laughs> yeah, don't look directly well, at it. El Nino year. <laughs> what was the first one? An accident, a tumble, mm. a caravan, and an embarrassment. <laughs> mm. <laughs> embarrassment of panda. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It could be any of those things. Um... A tumble. Uh, accident, tumble, embarrassment, caravan. caravan. Let's go with caravan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, caravan's cute. Caravan reminds me of like a, a vehicle. A... You it's know, like a, a a, watch out. Here comes a, a fucking panda is full of uh, a vehicle full of pandas. Huh? Here comes a Dodge caravan. Caravan. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the tumble. The tumble. Because okay. they're 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 playful creatures mm-hmm. with their little sugar cane. Tumble, they tumble around. Yeah, yeah, and they tumble around. They don't really, they just chill. Panda bears, man. Whew, let me tell you, it's a close game right now. Anyone can win this, and anyone can literally win this. Because tumble, this next tumble, question, tumble, gentlemen, down. It's, it's been a bit, but we got ourselves a little Florida Daily Dubs. Oh, shit. What do we, what do, we do for that? Daily Dubs. Dubs, 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 I didn't even know you still had it. I was going to say search your heart, but Lyle searched it for you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Okay, two points on the line here. Okay, guys? All right, this question's a little wonky. I'm going to do my best to get through it. In 2018, a homeless man named Jonathan Kremshaw was charged with attempted murder after he stabbed a tourist with a pair of scissors. The weird thing about the story, though, is A, Jonathan Kremshaw had been dead for two years. Hmm. B, uh, Jonathan Crenshaw, Crenshaw was charged with attempted murder for stabbing, but was missing both of his arms. Oh, no. Oh, I, I'm sorry, say that again? He, uh, he was uh, charged with attempted murder for stabbing a guy with the scissors, but he uh, is, has no arms. <laughs> he <was in> both <laughs> of his arms. His hands were not wide open. Does he have chompers? Uh, you can still stab a fella. That's true. Uh, see, he found a Florida law loophole that got him off the hook involving the fact that the scissors he used were left-handed scissors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was right-handed. And the scissors so loose. <laughs> Who would that fucking loophole be? Hey, man. Have your... <laughs> Listen, we're all left-handed. Things get weird. <laughs> okay. I'm left for you, Rob. Okay, okay. I know. That's, that's part of one of my mm-hmm. sex facts that I'll bring in the next show. <laughs> uh, or is it D? The tourist he stabbed was himself. One of these is true, and the rest I've made up. Uh, Again, real quick. 2018, a homeless man named Jonathan Crumshaw was charged with attempted murder after he stabbed a tourist with a pair of scissors. The weird thing was, though, is A, he'd been dead for two years. B, he was missing both of his arms. C, found the loophole about left-handed scissors. Or D, the tourist he stabbed was himself. Two points, guys. No pressure. Well, I am definitely excited about... Option C, where he found a loophole <laughs> involving left-handed scissors. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't fathom. Even in Florida, I can't oh, wow. fathom. Who says those words together? I can't mm-hmm. fathom a law that even in Florida exempts you. <laughs> well, he used his right arm, but they were left-arm scissors. <laughs> we had, or he had no arms. Well, that, that's the other one. I'm, t- I'm torn between. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. I am torn between the two arms. Um, <laughs> left, right, and none. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to figure out. You. I'm sorry. Read the question. Just the question one more time. Okay. In 2018, a homeless man named Jonathan Kremshaw was charged with attempted murder after he stabbed a tourist with a pair of skizzers. Uh The weird thing about the story, though, is... I just needed to know though. if you explained whether those charges stuck. <laughs> well, you didn't kill him. You I didn't, didn't, I didn't you, get you to didn't that. I said he was charged differentiate. with... Differentiate. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. going to... 
I'm going to imagine that what makes this story interesting is that a no-armed man found a way to stab another guy. Um, All right. Not the loophole with the left-handed scissors. Fine. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out. I'm reverse engineering. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the story. I'm just picturing this. A Florida man stabbed a guy. He had no arms. That's the headline, and that's my guess. Okay. <laughs> Look, I, John Mark. I could stab a guy without my arms. I don't think mm-hmm. I'd be very Ow. proficient. Well, you put a fucking scissors in your teeth. You put a... Light up your butt. Your Pointy end out. Shove that shit up my gap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the, the no arms, too. Okay. Ooh, okay. 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 Interesting. I'm not okay. on the island I expected to be. Mm-hmm. It is where it gets very tricky, and I need to call Matlock. <laughs> Matlock would say... <laughs> Get a, get a um, Matlock lifeline. Hmm, yeah, can I call the Matlock? <laughs> lifeline, please. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, uh, he stabbed himself. Okay, the touristy stab was himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's go over the answers here. <laughs> he's the one that called 911. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> actor, actor, actor. stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the victim? <laughs> Me. What did he look like? He was very handsome. Very handsome man. He's <laughs> homeless, though, but he's very a handsome. Selfie. So the selfie was somebody with the fucking scissors in his fucking <laughs> chest. <There we go. laughs> he looks like so, exactly like this. <laughs> Bless him. I'm going to immediately help send back up. Help. help good sir. I've been stabbed. Please uh, question one. Actor, child actor Corey Feldman, uh, who is also a musician, is about to head on tour with this band for their 2024 world tour. Uh, wasn't Nickelback? It wasn't Insane Clown Posse. Oh, it wasn't shit. Creed. It was you indeed Limp Fucking Bizkey. That's my body. That. I did not know the story. I don't know if you guys did, but uh, yeah, the logic panned out. We should oh, yeah. be able to see them soon, Ron. I'm gonna guess all tickets, okay? <laughs> I saw. You, you gotta know uh, he's gonna sit in with at least one song. Uh, I saw something. Do. I think it might have been on on Twitter or whatever, where somebody was um, discussing whether um, what Corey Feldman was doing on stage was like <laughs> some kind of high level performance art or not, yeah. because yeah. Yeah. they were showing all these different clips of him just like getting all irritated with his band members and like doing a bunch of random shit. And like, you're like, is this, this can't be real. Like, cause that seems to happen at like every show. Right. So it's like, uh-huh. he's gotta be doing a bit or something, but I don't know. It was just interesting. Well, didn't he fire all the angels? angels? I hope not. Well, it's his band is not they leave all <laughs> angels anymore. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, okay. That's too bad. I think it's a different, he's going a different direction. <laughs> Clearly he's still doing the Michael Jackson look. No. Wearing the one glove and dancing like Michael Jackson. No, not really. Yeah, he was straight uh, up. Oh, yeah. He was straight up. I mean, Andrew it may as well have been a fucking Michael Jackson tribute act. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is interesting because isn't isn't he implying, I don't know if he's come out and said it, but isn't he implying with all this shit that he's been doing lately that he was oh, he's, he's like, he went to the never molested Ranch. by a very <laughs> prominent, <laughs> famous person. Is it? Was yeah, it he's Neverland been, or he's, Netherland, he's, right? He's been saying that kind of stuff for a long time. Yeah. Oh, no. Ever, oh, not, not the ever... Netherland. Right? <laughs> 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 I can't laugh at that. I'm Steve Bubbles. Come over and see the Netherland. I'm awful. Oh, fuck. I think I told you guys. I watched that, that documentary on HBO or whatever, and it, it did change my mind. Like, I think, About I think Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson totally moved. Yeah, I really well, think fucking molested kids. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say. You know, no, it was put out so after I, I, I would I watch that, that documentary. documentary. It really but... was compelling. Well, you don't ask a question. I'm pretty sure he probably did do, yeah, but... See, that's uh, the thing. You know, I mean, dead just... man, it's kind of hard to talk shit At about. At the same you know? time, I mean, I would believe that the fucking crazy life he had, he was famous before he really knew how to even Be a child. <laughs> talk yeah, with, yeah. like, mm-hmm. any kind of intelligence. And he was raised by psychopaths. There's no question about that. Yeah. So I would believe also that he was just a weird man child that yeah, was doing things kind of that were I inappropriate, but were coming from, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. But th- I mean, does it matter what, what his, 
what his intention were if that was abuse to those kids that's abuse i mean it's like yeah lines were crossed i mean that's the bottom line oh sure yeah uh question two the best selling car of all time was indeed the toyota corolla ron oh damn oh okay anyone want to get take a guess at how how many it's in the millions how many millions of units the toyota corolla has sold to be the number one selling car of all time no idea in the mil- lot, okay, um, I would wow. say eight hundred million. Well, Ooh. way yeah, okay, uh, way well, high. Well, John Mark, <laughs> John Mark, he said way some. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, 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 Nine hundred fifty million. Fifty million. Oh, okay, how many it sold? Uh, so second place, eight hundred. I mean, eighty. <laughs> um, second place <clears throat> was the Civic, which was at thirty million. Okay, that's still a lot. If you imagine what? that like in a parking lot, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, what is a group of fucking pandas called? Wait, who got that? An right? accident. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You did. I, I said just uh, me. I, I said your name after. Yeah, just you, Ron. Just you okay. want that. So two points on the board there. Everyone else with one. This okay. is the best one. I want to know. This what is a great one here. A uh, group of pandas is not called an accident. It's not called a tumble. Not called a caravan. It's called a fucking embarrassment. It true. That's what? literally the name of a group of pandas. Is, look, Google it. I had to Google it. I read Why? it one place and I was like, no, no I don't. Well, I mean, I don't know. Because maybe they're just goofy, goofy fuckers. Well, we have but... the phrase an embarrassment of riches. I suppose if you have something rare and at one point endangered, hmm. I don't think. <clears throat> you think of it. I don't yeah. think they're endangered anymore, but they're still rare. So I guess an embarrassment yeah. of pandas. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm dying to know. Uh, that. Nobody got that right. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. And lastly, <laughs> we have a Florida Daily Double. Do it loud. I'm, I'm trying. Daily Double. Daily Double. Perfect. Nailed the third try. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, in 2018, a homeless man named Jonathan was charged with attempted murder after he stabbed a tourist with a pair of scissors. But the weird thing about this story is Jonathan is missing both of his fucking arms. He's a no, he's a no arm street painter. Paints with his feet. He stabbed a guy with a pair of scissors with his fucking feet. Wow. Oh, his feet. I hadn't yeah. even thought about that. Yeah. But I'll take the dip. Right to the gap. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just I went right how I'd stab a fella. Without, uh, uh, Ron and John Mark both got that for two points a pop, but oh, Ron already shit. had two, so that makes him our winner today. Nice. Look at that, Ron, sir. I got it. We got there. Yeah, you talk a little ass eating, and you're right back on top, man. It's like your spinach. Well, just take it in my zone, and uh, <laughs> by the time I come up for air, we're both winners. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. Stabbed a fellow with no arms, so he did it. He did do he it. Didn't and just he, get. Uh, uh, he was convicted to uh, for a lesser crime, I believe. Uh, maybe he spent a little time <laughs> in prison, but yeah. it's not. It's not first degree. It's not second degree. We got to call this third degree, even though it was premeditated <laughs> because he used uh, a very difficult limb. To he was uh, really uh, toe toe in the line <laughs> between uh, <laughs> second and third degree. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, I'll see myself up. (laughs) All right. I'm going to make this promise to y'all. We come back to our next podcast, and we are doing more of Ron's um, sex stuff. (laughs) That's not so bad. I wish I would have worded that better. I have a great sex story I'm going to share with you guys that I've been holding on to for, I'm not even going to say how long. Only Ron has heard it, and he's only heard it over text, but it's a pretty funny story. Oh, is this? Uh, Edit this out, Ron. Oh, okay. (laughs) But you'll find it's a good one. Yeah, it is a good one. And <laughs> something that's probably not all that rare. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to that. All right, guys. Next episode, probably in January, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. We, we got... It'd be great if we could squeeze one in. We'll try. We got a yeah. chunk of December yeah. left, so. All right. Well, real sorry about your pops, buddy. Oh, you it's know. all good, man. I appreciate you sharing with us yeah. and a uh, little bit of heavy... A little bit of silly. I guess that's life in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. That's certainly and, uh, this podcast. You know. Well, it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the way it is. You know, we all die. We all cry. We all yeah. die. We'll all get there at one point. All right, y'all. Tune in next time. Uh, we'll be talking about sex. Christopher's yeah, unfortunate it. sex story. 
9 11, and uh, maybe I'll share a little bit about the chaos that went down a couple nights ago at the Ronster's Bad Santa photo shoot. Because holy <laughs> shit, it went way crazier than I would have imagined. So, I was so imagining we're going to be, crazy. We're gonna be more talk like a 9 inch and yeah. 11 inch. I'll send you guys oh, some my, photos next, <laughs> as they roll in. The, right? <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a nice week. We'll see y'all. Night, guys. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. I challenge you to a duel between you, him, that other person, and my pubic hair.